Hello, my name is Ty Brown. I am uh, going to do a quick video here on uh, how I create a uh, large airplane and get it ready for shipping. Um, I have a plane here I've, I, I, I built and I flew and, and I usually fly one for a season and I usually sell it. Anyway, I, I've got to ship it from North Carolina out to Arizona. And the big problem a lot of people run into is how to create these things without having, it, having any damage. I've been um, set, uh, shipping planes. I've shipped them all over the world, and I have yet to totally lose one. I usually have somebody stick a forklift through the side of it and maybe some minor damage, but I've never lost a complete airplane. Um, I do it a little bit different. Um, I've seen guys take and put a, 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 make a big crate and throw a bunch of popcorn in there and throw the airplane on top of it and and it just show up after all the settling it does in in the box if the first hard hit it hat it comes in contact with it usually breaks something anyway I'm gonna do a quick video I'm gonna show you how I do it um, I've, I'll go through the materials I use and um, all the tools I use so I'm gonna get everything set up and I'll show you how I go about it Okay, here we are back with the airplane, and we need to, you need to figure out what you're going to do first. This plane right here, from the tip of the tail to the nose, this is even without a motor, is 94 inches long. So um, right now, we're, the cheapest right way to ship that I've found is by Greyhound. Uh, their measurements are, um, the longest they'll take is 82 by 47 by 30, and I have ship boxes exactly that size, and they're really huge. But um, in considering that, this, this one, even with the cowl off, pull the cowl off, I'm going to have to make a box that is not about 94 to 95 inches long because you want to give yourself at least two inches on each end. Okay, so this means that um, the next one I, I like using is the overground freight. Is full, I use forward air. There's many of them out there. Forward air goes to all the major... US airports so it'll go to any of the major airports in the US so um, what I'm doing is whenever you ship by anybody that goes by ground which is one of the freight carriers you have to really strengthen up your box um, another thing Greyhound even though they have their size and even though I've shipped with the large boxes those cannot be over a hundred pounds so you you have a big consideration in weight of keeping the weight down um, Shipping Greyhound, we uh, I use uh, Luon, a quarter inch Luon. It's a lot. You can find it at Home Depot, Lowe's, about ten dollars a sheet, um, a four by eight sheet, and uh, even that large box, like I was talking, we're coming in like ninety six pounds with the model in with with a, a twenty five to thirty pound model inside. Um, by going the the ground, like I'm going with this one, you have to really take in consideration. You've got to make a heavy-duty box. Um, I'm planning on sheeting this one with half-inch plywood. Uh, the, the crate itself will be outside, will be um, half-inch plywood. Um, you have to, because um, uh, they do not take care of it like uh, Greyhound. Greyhound hand picks up everything. Uh, Ford Air, they're going to use forklifts, so you have to make it a lot stronger. Anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the size of the box we need, and I'm figuring this is going to be ni about 94, 95 inches long by about um, 40 wide and 30 high. So I'm going to go from here. I'm going to move the plane out of the way. I'm going to get my materials together, and, and we'll go from there. Uh, as far as the tools, um, I use a um, two nail guns. I have one that shoots nail brads. These are the two-inch brads. I like those. It helps you put it together pretty quickly. And then I use uh, a staple gun, and I think these are 5 8 or 7 8 inch staples. I, with the with the half inch sheeting, I'll, I'll need to go to the uh, longer staples, like the 1 inch or 1 and a quarter, I forgot what they make. And um, also, you um, need um, a good wood glue. Get you a, a decent wood glue, because I glue all my joints, because... Um, I've had them drop boxes, um, and they've got to withstand a drop. So anyway, 
I'm gonna get everything together and we'll go I'll go through how to actually put this box crate together. Okay, here we are. We got um, I've got the outline cut out. What, what I ended up with, I need a 94 by 40, and I'm going to make it 34 inches high. That gives me plenty of room all the way around the model. And uh, going with, uh, I, I checked with Ford Air, the, the price for shipping this is going to be right at $300. And it doesn't matter if I go an inch or two uh, one way or the other. We're just looking at a couple dollars either way. Um, so what I've done is, uh, on this one, especially going forward, I said you have to really reinforce it. I have taken two by fours, and I've cut them in half for the main frame. So these are um, one and a half by one and a half, more or less. Um, uh, the, the, the length of these are 94, and then the, to make this 40 wide, I cut these down to 37 inches. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to nail two frames together on, t on top of each other. This will be the top and the bottom. At every, at every joint, I will um, use the glue uh, before I put any nails in. Um, being that this is an inch and a half, and these are two inch nails, I use a lot on the ends and on the insides. I use a lot of nails on these uh, because they're, they're not going to be taken apart and you want them to stay together and the little brads, uh, they go in really well. So I'm going to go ahead and get the two frames done and I'll go ahead and cut the, the verticals and show you how I install those. Um, I'll get those done and, and then I'll go from there. Okay, you can see here I got the two um, mirror images made. I got two, two of the exact same size. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to pull one off, of, one off of here. And I'm going to take the bottom one and I'm going to mount four corners on it. And I'm just going to use my uh, glue and my nail brads again. And um, anyway, I'm going to nail them in place and they'll be sticking up all four. And then we'll add the top to it. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done. And um, those are all cut. The, the good thing about it, you can just cut all these at one time and, and know what you're doing. You have to just to take in consideration the thick 34 high, you have to take in consideration of um, the thickness of these as you cut your um, post out. So I'll get those cut, um, installed, and actually, I'll go ahead and lay the top on, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, I've got the um, sides up. And I've already nailed the top piece on, so we have top and bottom that are same. Uh, generally, I go ahead and before I put the bottom on, I'll go ahead and frame in the model. And usually when I'm building a smaller box that's a little bit lighter, it's easy to work with. Well, being that this is going to be very heavy, I, I'm going ahead and I've already cut the uh, bottom sheet of plywood. This is one half inch plywood. Um... For this, I think I was like $15, $16 a sheet, and that was 94 inches long by 40 inches wide. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue, I'm going to run a bead of glue under each corner, and I'm going to go ahead and nail this um, plywood sheeting to this. This will just make it easier for us to move in the future, um, especially when I have to pull it off on the floor to get the stuff. But I like to say I have the top on, and I, I'm getting ready to nail the bottom sheeting on, and then we'll put the model in. Okay, you can see here I've got... Uh